Have you ever felt inner resistance to doing something you know you should do? Do you ever feel like you can justify or make excuses when you don't do what you should? Do you have people in your life that you know need something from you, but it just seems like too much work? Hey everybody, this is Steve, and God asks us to give of ourselves generously. This week, we've got another really interesting pair of scripture readings. In the Gospel according to Luke, we read about Christ raising a widow's son from the dead. And in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, we read some great encouragement about how God provides us with every blessing in abundance. For a bit more context, check out the videos we made on Luke's Gospel and on Paul's epistle. More importantly, make sure you read the passages before we continue. Seriously, there's a pause button, and links to the readings are down in the doobly-doo. Go ahead, I'll wait. Read it? Ready? Let's get started. I want to start with Paul's letter because, as we've already seen a few times in this series, it can be easy to misunderstand Paul's words. You see, the verses we read this week were part of a fundraising appeal in 2 Corinthians. Paul was asking one of the Christian communities he started, the church in Corinth, to help support the first Christian community, the church in Jerusalem. This is something Paul mentions multiple times in his letters, as he tried to get the wealthier Gentile communities to support the poor community in Jerusalem. There are some who fall into the trap of viewing Paul's words as a promise of good things, in the most literal sense that when we give to God, he'll give us stuff in return. That's not what Paul is saying. He's not promising the Corinthians stuff for their stuff. He promises them, and us, an increase in your harvest of righteousness. But what did he mean by that, a harvest of righteousness? This week's Gospel readings can shed some light on this tough question. Luke tells us about one of the times Christ raised a person from the dead. This time, it was the son of a poor widow. Women, as you might know, were not treated very well at this point in history. This woman was a widow, her husband was dead, and the reading tells us that she had just lost her only son. This left her alone with very few options when it came to making money or surviving on a daily basis. So, apart from the intense grief of losing yet another person that was so important to her, this loss also set her up for a life of poverty and struggles we can't even imagine. Yet, as Luke writes, when Christ looks upon her, he has compassion. Yet he doesn't address her poverty or her material need. He doesn't give her money or instruct others to give her money. Instead, he raises her son from the dead. This is a really important window into what Christ is actually concerned with. He's not here to make us rich or to give us material goods. He's here to give us life. And to be blunt, this life that Christ offers us, this true life that Christ intends for us, awaits us on the other side of death. The son of the widow that we read about in Luke's Gospel, under his own power, has only one place to go. He follows his father into the grave. As we covered in an episode of Be the Bee, when Adam and Eve first sinned, when they separated themselves from God, they brought death into the world. Because when we cut ourselves off from the source of life, death is all that's left. And when we act, not for the life of the world, but in ways that are selfish and sinful, we perpetuate death. Life, true life, is only something God can offer. Without him, under our own power, there's only darkness. When Christ looks upon this mother, the widow, he sees that she can do absolutely nothing, that she is ground down by the grief and the loss and her helplessness before death. Death has her husband. Death took her son. And now she is utterly alone, staring into the void of what is certainly her own destiny too, as she sets out to bury her only child. Christ looks upon this widow, and he has compassion on her. He sees her emptiness, and he fills her up with the gift of the life of her son. When Christ sees this woman, he sees a woman shattered by the deaths in her life. A woman whose very personhood has been affected by the loss of her husband and son, these key people in her life. So Christ gives her a break from the oppression of the tomb and a taste of the life that is to come by raising her son. It's not yet the fullness of God's kingdom. 
his everlasting life, but by restoring her son to her, Christ gives the widow a taste of the life and resurrection that is to come. He offers the widow hope in what seemed like a hopeless situation. And that's what Paul is asking of the Corinthians. He's asking them to open their hearts to the poverty of the church in Jerusalem. He's asking them to open their wallets and give, to the extent they can, to their brothers and sisters in need. He's asking them to give the Jerusalem Christians a much needed break from the tomb, to be Christ for them and restore their hope. And at the same time, Paul is reminding the Corinthians that when they let go of their material wealth, Christ also gives them a taste of the resurrection and life, a life free from the hold of money, of property, of achievements, a life free of dead things and full of his life. Paul is asking them to set aside the things that don't actually make them wealthy, to open their hearts in love to what will actually make them wealthy. He's asking them to give of their material blessings, not so God can give them back more stuff, but so God can give them something even better, true life in Christ. So I'd like to end, as we always do on Live the Word, with three questions as we wrestle with these readings. First, what are the ways you are stubbornly refusing to give of yourself, refusing to empty yourself so that Christ can fill you up? Are you resisting God's call in your life? Are you holding on to money or time or reputation or something that you could be offering instead? Second, is there someone in your life you could have compassion on today but haven't yet? Whether it's someone who needs your forgiveness or your attention or a few dollars for a bite to eat, is there someone to whom you can offer a bit of mercy? And if so, what's stopping you? Third, and this is a tough one, how are we like the Father in Luke's Gospel? We so often complain about people, especially young people, falling away from the church, but are we open to the possibility that they're simply following us, just as the Son followed his Father into the grave? How are we leading people younger than us, whether they're our children or our younger siblings or cousins, away from Christ and his church? We'll be back with a new episode on Monday. And my buddy Christian will have a short response video up on Thursday as he wrestles with these questions. I hope you'll read the gospel and epistle passages we covered today, and whether it's with family or friends or a Bible study group, I hope you'll talk about what we've covered and wrestle with what God has for you in your life. Most importantly, I hope you'll celebrate with us this Sunday and every Sunday to hear the beautiful scripture readings proclaimed during the Divine Liturgy and to learn how you can live the word. Thanks for watching. You can click on our logo to subscribe to our channel and make sure you turn on notifications so you never miss a video. You can find lots more from us at our website, y2am.org.